Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And this month, we're talking all about the design decisions that you need to make, whether you're building a small lighting rig, a large lighting rig, or anything in between. And we're really taking a dive into my brain and how I think through when I'm laying out a lighting rig, whether it's for band, church, DJ, theater lighting, uh, these principles are going to apply no matter what type of lighting you're doing. And in this video, I've got to talk about the two things that you've got to be thinking about when you are laying out your lighting rig. So if you missed our last video, you'll want to go back and check that out. I talk about all about lighting positions, where to put them, etc. And you'll notice if you did watch that, that today in the visualizer, we'll head over there now. I'm in a different lighting rig than I was last time. Okay. Uh, today we've got a, uh, we've got some truss towers as our front light. We've got some different trusses as our backlight. Now these could be pipes. These could be in a theater. They could be stands. Um, they don't have to be trusses. That's just what's easy to do in this particular visualizer. Um, and we're on about a three, four foot stage, um, in a blank room. Okay. Uh, with the lighting rig that I used actually for a previous video, uh, the one universe lighting challenge, if you haven't checked that out, go check it out here. And, and by the way, if, if you are enjoying this, I know I've told you like a billion things to do so far, but go ahead and hit subscribe, like this video and uh, we'll get going. So when I think about laying out a lighting rig, we already talked about in the last video, getting those angles of light, you know, right. Getting two points of light from the front, hopefully 45 up and out, but even in a situation like this, where we've got some truss towers or stands at the corner of the stage, we just get as close as we can. Oh, so we talked all about that angle, right? And when it comes to laying out the lights that are behind your band, especially when there's haze, or even if there's not, um, or the lights to the side, maybe it's a worship service, whatever. Um, there's really two angles to think about when you're designing. So when I'm putting lights behind, and this goes for whether we're lighting with atmosphere like we are now, whether we don't have atmosphere like haze or fog, okay? Um, we want to go ahead and I'll move some stuff around here and really optimize for a couple things. Um, for one, big beam looks like this look awesome. They look really cool, right? Being able to have lights in different places and being able to point them around the stage being able to get really big beam looks in the air. And even I've got on this rig, I've got these uh, color band Pix M's that can move around on their tilt axis as well too. Okay. And so whenever I'm placing these fixtures on these trusses, I'm looking at what kind of angles can I get? Because I want to be able to go and I want to do a look like this. Okay. Where I'm lighting the band the angle of the primary fixtures that are hitting them, which are uh, these spot fixtures here, that angle is a really nice angle where it's not too low. Like, you know, on this other truss here, these are too low. If I would point them at these guys' head, it'd be hitting the audience. It'd be just blinding them. And we don't want to do that. Sometimes we might do that, but a lot of the show we won't. So my priority, I kind of got split priorities here, is height-wise, if I can do it, I'm aiming to get the angle here so that I can hit the back of these people's heads and light them without drowning out the whole audience in light. I mean, sure, the people in the front row might get hit. They should expect that for being in the front row. Um, but if I get too low, I'm going to be spilling out into the audience too much, actually, like uh, these other movers are down low, these little ADJZ4s. Okay, they're, they're getting in the audience a lot, okay, on that look. Um, there are times, of course, when you go to this, like I mentioned, and, and you do blind that audience, but there's a lot of times where you don't. So when I'm thinking about laying things out and especially where the heights of my trusses on the sides and or top are going to be, I want to make sure that I'm in a good place to get a solid angle on that backlight. Because I also don't want it to get too steep and be directly overhead the people because then I'm really, really limited in what looks I can do with the backlight, right? If I'm directly overhead with the backlight, um, if I wasn't behind the band like I, was, like I am here, but I was literally right over their heads, 
it's difficult to get interesting fan and cross and you know x looks um out of your lighting rig it, it, it gets tougher to make those look good so we want to get behind the band to kind of optimize for those really great beam looks but on the other hand i always like having the ability to not be all the way up to my ceiling if i can to allow me to get some really good sky looks where I'm in the air, you know, doing graphical, really cool things. Okay. So that's really the, the struggle and also the, um, the focus here is as you're laying out a lighting rig and as I'm laying out a rig, I'm always looking at kind of the balance between lighting the people on the stage and making sure that when someone takes a picture with their phone camera, or there's a camera on the stage shooting them, that they look really good up close. But also, that I'm able to go ahead with my other lights or even with these lights in other situations. And I can move them around and I can get the overall look looking really good too. And when I'm thinking about those two things and finding a balance between them, finding a place that is not too high, but high enough behind the band that is wide enough that I can get a really wide look, but my lights aren't angling super steep to get my people, that's when I found the right place. And so on a practical level, just when you're designing, when you're laying out a show, you know, it's great to light the environment and I love doing that, but make sure you get the people on the stage, make sure that they're well lit first, okay? Then focus on things that are graphical and it's okay to pull back a little bit on lighting the people perfectly in order to get a great graphical look. But don't forget about lighting the people. Even if you're on a festival and you're, you know, 300 feet away from the stage and everything you see is all graphical, you can't see the people up close because you're 300 feet back that way. Um, even if you're that way, remember, people still see them up close and you got to make sure they look great up close as well as from far away. Awesome. If you've enjoyed this tip, subscribe here and uh, be sure to like this video. Come back next week for more. If you're new to lighting, if stage lighting is new to you, I want to get you started with a free guide to begin with lighting. It's tailored specifically to whatever type of lighting you do, whether that be band, church, DJ, theater, or some combination of them. And I've got it for you over at learnstagelighting.com. Check it out here on the screen and we'll see you in our next video. Thanks.